The shot we're gonna go over in this video is one of the most important but rarely talked about shots in all of pickleball, and it's the fourth shot. If you can master the fourth shot in pickleball, you will have the edge over your opponents and keep them from getting to the most valuable spot on the court, that's the kitchen line. We're gonna go over the fundamental techniques and some drills to help you master this shot in this video. And be sure to stay to the end because we're giving away a thousand dollars worth of sub perk store credit split evenly between five lucky winners. Stay to the end to figure out how to enter. Let's roll. So first let's talk about what the fourth shot is. So let's say team A serves the ball, team B returns the ball, team A would then probably hit a third shot drop or a third shot drive then team B would respond to the third shot with a, the fourth shot. And that's what we're gonna go over in this video. So there are two main scenarios that are gonna happen when you're hitting your fourth shot. Either your opponent is gonna drive the ball at you or they're gonna drop the ball. And we're gonna go over how to respond to the drop later, but first, Let's talk about the drive. So when your opponent drives the ball at you, it's very important that you have short and compact swings and you try to keep them back responding with that ball towards their feet. You also want to make sure you have nice active feet. So this is what it should look like. If my opponent drives the ball at me, I want a nice short compact swing. Okay, again. That's a good example there of how I need to keep my feet active as well. I wanna make sure that I'm not too flat footed and I have a short compact swing aiming down at the feet. Those are the main things to work on when it comes to responding to a drive, our short compact volleys deep into the court and also making sure that you keep your feet active. And now we're gonna go into how to execute the fourth shot when responding to someone's drop. This may be the most difficult thing to master, but we're gonna break it down for you and make it very simple. So now that we just talked about the drive, we're gonna talk about how to respond when your opponent hits a drop. Now there are primarily two different shots that you can do here. And one's gonna be a little bit more offensive and one's gonna be a little bit more defensive. Now here's the deal. You're gonna decide that based on the type of drop that they give you. So if your opponent gives you a really good drop, you're gonna naturally have to respond in a defensive manner and let them come in and really respect the fact that they just hit a good shot. Now, with that, there are also going to be times where they might hit a drop that you can take out of the air, and that's going to be more of an offensive shot. So first, I'm going to show you what it's like to hit an offensive ball, meaning a ball that's going to be taken out of the air. That drop maybe isn't a very good drop because the ball is traveling to a place where I can hit or of offensive shot on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for a ball that's traveling deeper into the kitchen that I can get out of the air. So if I hit a shot and it's traveling deeper, now I'm able to hit a more offensive shot. Really important things to keep in mind here is that paddle face is going forward. It's a short and compact swing. And I have my paddle angled down because I want the ball to go down towards their feet. I'll show you one more. So my goal right there is to really keep my opponent back and not let them come into the kitchen. Because remember, this is the best place to play and we don't want our opponents to have an easy time getting here. This is one of the hardest things when it comes to mastering the fourth shot and it's learning when to take the ball out of the air and apply pressure and keep them back with a roll volley versus letting the ball bounce. So how do you know when to take the ball out of the air versus when to let the ball bounce? So a good rule of thumb that I learned from a pro player is if the ball bounces higher off the ground and your contact point is higher when the ball bounces than it is when you take the ball out of the air, that's a good indication that you should let the ball bounce. However, if you're contacting the the ball at a higher point then the ball is going to bounce off the ground that's one you should take out of the air it's really important not to get overextended because you get in a really unathletic position so you really have to judge how to apply pressure off the bounce all right so now i'm going to demonstrate what this could look like so she's going to hit some drops that one i could take out of the air because it was a higher contact point than if i would have let it bounce okay and then now i'm going to try another one here 
that one I had to let bounce. And when, it, when I let it bounce, I want it to bounce all the way up to the apex and I want to apply top spin. A great thing you could do here is take your thumb and rotate that paddle face to the ground to create top spin. So here we go. I'm gonna decide whether to let this bounce. All right, I let that one bounce. Let that one bounce. And if it bounces high enough, the higher the ball bounces, the more pressure I can apply. So when you're learning this, it's gonna take some time, but realize if you can keep them back, that is the best play. So that one there was really shallow. So on that ball, I really kind of have to concede and let her come into the kitchen line and hit an unattackable low shot. Because if I try to speed that ball up, she's gonna crash in, hit down on the ball and win the point. So now we're gonna go into a drill that's gonna help us decide, do I counter the drive? Do I let the ball bounce on the drop? Do I take the ball out of the air on the drop? And ultimately, how do I apply the most pressure without leaving the ball too high for them to come in and slam. Let's go into the drill now. So this is how the game's gonna start. We're gonna give a nice cooperative feed to the back line. They're gonna hit a drop. Yeah, that was a good one. So I had to concede. I don't know if you noticed there, but I had to rotate this foot back and I tried to keep him from coming in. So we would have gotten that point. It's one to zero and we're gonna start again. So you guys go back to the back line. Either you or your partner can serve. Your serve is not trying to win a point, just a nice cooperative feed. So one zero. So to let that one bounce and then they made it up. So now we're playing the point out. Okay, so now they got the point. So now it's one to one. Okay, they're gonna go back and we're gonna work through this progression until they get to seven or we get to 11. All right, let's do another point here. So I'm gonna mix it up here. Gotta let that one bounce, but I'm really trying to keep them back. And points live. Okay, so they would have gotten that point. It's a good shot. They would have gotten that point. Scores now two to one. And here we go. Oh, nice. It's in, that a baby. So now it's two to two. You guys kind of get how this works. We're gonna go till either they hit seven or we hit 11, really working on keeping them back. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you give it a like and subscribe to the playpickleball.com YouTube channel. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comment section below. And as we mentioned before, we're giving away $1,000 worth of Selkirk store credit split evenly between five lucky winners. To enter the giveaway, you can find the link in the description below. We'll see you on the next one.